Hi, so I'm um, coming on today to go over some pamphlets that I got for um, when I was in counseling for domestic violence. Um, so I wanted to show them to you so that you can see the red flags um, and how to cope and also just a cycle of abuse. Now, as you've seen in some of my other videos, um, my car life and then quotations DV um, videos, you know, um, I've talked about the Domestic Violence Act really doesn't protect um, those that are emotionally abused. Um, I'm just looking at my list here. And when I was going to appeal my order of protection, because it got denied because he had made such a circus out of everything. Um, but they don't really cover emotional abuse or psychological abuse. And when I was going to appeal the case, like I just said, my lawyer basically said that people could threaten so many things and still get denied or the courts just let them go and I think that's the problem in society today that people are saying what is going on and you know of course there could be people lying um, I guess innocent until proven guilty but it seems like it's innocent until something serious happens with domestic violence. So anyway, I just want to go over these forms with you. Sorry about the traffic, but there's a cool breeze today, so I have a window open. And um, let's look at the pamphlets. Okay, so the first pamphlet is this um, circle, which I think is a really good representation. So let me just get my arms so that... We're not moving all over the place. And let's have our white candles for protection. Um, so, let's see. Let me go like this. Hopefully you can see it. But it says, okay, there's um, the bearer, which is the abuser. In the middle is the victim, who is in denial. And even the abuser could be in denial to his abuse of behavior but I don't know I think that's a narcissistic thing and they do know what they're doing but I think mental illness also plays a part um, probably not in every person but I'd say most so anyway um, the tension builds is the first thing so your abuser may become moody may nitpick um, withdraws affection, puts you down. Drinking and doing drugs is also a part of an abuser's um, MO. Um, destroys property. E even if it's just um, like a little ding or you know um, a little mark in, a, in something or breaking let's say a plastic fork, whatever, you know, something that's not very big, it's still destroying property, criticizes, and um, makes you think you're going crazy. All right, so this is the tension building, okay, with the abuser, because they can't um, maintain calm, they can't maintain civil behavior, because they are abuser, okay? And then the victim's response over here is they try to calm him or her, because females can be abusers too. Um, they try to nurture, to over nurture, you know, they're trying to save the person from what they didn't get in their childhood, which also leads to um, abusive behavior if they did not have good role models growing up if they did not have structure and discipline and love um, and some joy growing up that will contribute to an abusive behavior okay so um, the victim stays away from friends and family um, 
agrees, you know, says I'm sorry when they've done nothing wrong, tries to reason like, well, you know, she or he is just like this because um, they try to appease him uh, or her by doing something nice for them, like cooking a favorite dinner. You know, the victim is trying to calm the situation down because the tension is building. And the victim feels like they're walking on eggshells. That is not a way to live. Okay? It's just not. And it, it can become normal behavior because you, you just don't know the mood of the uh, abuser, batterer, from day to day, sometimes from hour to hour, okay? So then it goes to the explosion because tension is built. Now it's the explosion. Um, and tension is built again because they're acting out. It's as if a, a, a um, you know, terrible twos, toddler, they're acting out. And they're acting out because either they're losing control of you, um, afraid they're going to lose you, fear of abandonment, um, their mindset is skewed, they don't have a, a grasp of reality, um, they're narcissistic, you know, multiple reasons, um, drugs and alcohol definitely affect the brain and you know how they grew up you have to grow up in a loving home in a um, disciplined home and if you don't then you're either the victim or the abuser so either way you can fall into if you didn't have a good childhood growing up and you had traumas, you can fall, in, fall into a victim mode or a abuser mode. No fault of your own. You know, subconsciously, this is what you do. So as the victim, you're putting up with this because this is all you know. As the abuser, batterer, you're acting out from all the trauma you had as a childhood. Now, this is not an excuse because this is not um, acceptable at all. So a lot of people in this world need a lot of help. So, so then we go to the explosion. Explosion is humili humiliating you, humiliate you. Humiliation, I'm trying to say the word right. Um, in public, in front of others, even alone, they imprison you meaning keep you under their thumb keep you with them at all times because they can't have you near other people that can check your reality that can tell you what's wrong you know when I was growing up I had a narcissistic mother my father really wasn't abusive but he also wasn't a protector as far as the abuse goes um, he was in denial okay um, but when they keep you away from, when I used to say, because it was a very closed family. If you know anything about open families and closed families, okay, it was a very closed family. So when I would, let's say, stand up for myself and call out these behaviors, my parents would say, who have you been talking to? Uh, nobody. <laughs> myself. Me, myself, and I. Because... They don't want you around other people that you can fact check. Is this behavior appropriate? Because other people are going to say no. So that, that always interests me. That them saying, who have you been talking to? Well, no one. I could see things clearly. That's my gift. Um, but anyway, they could start hitting. Even pushing. Um, choking. Even if it's not like with two hands, you know, one time my ex-husband grabbed my shirt and my cop, like my, the cop top part, the collar of my shirt and, um, he grabbed it hard and like pulled me or whatever, but it made a mark as if I were choked. Um, 
they could go to prison, imprisonment. They could get arrested. Um, you should, whenever you date somebody, I think, um, what's it called? Checkmate.com, C-H-E-C-K, mate, M-A-T-E, dot com. For a small fee, you can look up anybody. And you can, as long as you have the correct date of birth, um, it's pretty easy to look up people. And if you find that anyone had any kind of um, assault charges, battery charges, um, even theft, you know, you don't want to date someone that's going to steal from you, but just um, stalking charges, whatever, you can look it up. And I always did. When, I, when there was someone who I was um, going to date seriously, I would look them up. <laughs> and um, the one guy, not too long ago, like maybe a year ago, whatever, I looked him up and I forget, I think it was check fraud or so, something, I don't know. I can't remember what the charge was. But I asked him about it and he got very defensive and very like, why are you looking up things on me, about me? You know, like the first reaction was defensive and I was just inquiring because in my mind, just be truthful. I can handle the truth. But anyway, I, I thought he was shady anyway. So he, he did not like that fact that I called him out on that. So you might not want to call people out, but, um, you know, I was dating someone else. I looked them up and they were trespassing. So which I think when he was going through a divorce, probably he went to the house for something and she said he was trespassing. So, you know, I could throw that out. I did date someone who was in prison uh, for a long time. Um, for, it was when he was in a gang when he was younger. And I think he paralyzed someone, um, you know, in a fight. Back then they didn't use guns. So, and I think the, the person was wheelchair bound. So he actually did go to prison for like six years or something, six to eight years, I don't know, which is kind of a life sentence. Seven years, I think, is life. But anyway, um, it's like, he, he, and he did tell me. He did tell me about that. And um, I think I looked it up after he told me about it. And yeah, he, he was telling the truth. So he went in as a, as a teen, as a young teen, and came out as an adult. And so anyway, but he, he, he wasn't, um, he really wasn't an abuser. He was very gentle. He was a very nice person. And I don't judge a book by the cover. So, um, th but that's just me, okay? But, you know, he ended up, he did steal from me. Come to <laughs> now that I remember, yeah, he stole something from me, a piece of jewelry, and denied it. So, I uh, dropped him. But anyway, um... So theft could be in here too. So when they explode, however minimal or however um, maximum, you know, effect of the explosion, the victim, he or she tries to protect themselves. They call the police or call a neighbor. neighbor. Um, they leave or they fight back, which I would not recommend fighting back at all. Unless you are being stabbed a hundred times or, you know, have a gun pointed in your face, then fight back. But leaving is good. Um, but what people do is try to calm the abuser and try to reason with the abuser better. That's not going to work in the moment of the explosion. In the moment of the rage. Oh, and there's rape here too. And it doesn't matter if it's a husband, a boyfriend. If they force sex on you, it's rape. Okay? Just plain and simple. It doesn't matter that they feel they have a right to you because you're their spouse or you're their girlfriend or you've dated for years. You know? Rape is rape. Okay? If you did not want it, if you expressed you did not want it, it's rape. Okay? So make sure you express how you feel when it's happening. Okay? Because then you can go to the police. But trying to calm them or reason with them is not going to happen. You need to, at that moment of explosion, be quiet. 
get yourself safe okay you can try to reason with them later um they probably need help they probably need to go to counseling and i'm surprised that's not on here but that doesn't always happen okay so the next phase is the honeymoon oh i'm sorry you know they beg forgiveness they promise to get counseling they go to the church they talk to the pastor they 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 find out where an aa meeting is flowers presents i'll never do it again um want to get intimate with you and declare your love because they're sucking you in um to it's what it is it's um what you call love bombing love bombing and it's and it's I was going to say it's fake. Um, I don't know if it's always fake. But this part. Not, I'm saying I don't know if they don't love you. I, I'm not saying that's fake. Maybe they do love you. But this part is fake. Because they have to quash you down. They have to calm you now. And get you into a honeymoon phase. So that you forget, forget the top two. Alright. So... Even if they go to counseling, even if they go to AA meetings, even if they go to the doctor, even if they go to church, it's not going to sustain because it builds again. Um, they cry, okay? They say, I'm sorry. And they beg for forgiveness to get you back under their spell basically a spell so the victim's response is they agree to stay they take them back they stop you know legal proceedings drop the case set up the counseling appointments um they feel hopeful and they're like oh maybe this time you know he really meant he was sorry i could see it in his eyes you know i really felt it you know, he really loves me. And maybe he does because he doesn't. If he loves you, he really doesn't even know what it is to love somebody because maybe he never received love to himself or she. But this is no excuse is the point. It is not an excuse. You do not have to put up with all this because the tension will build again. Because abusers, unless they get serious psychological, medical spiritual emotional help are not going to stop this cycle because this is what they know okay and the cycle is let me just get the next flyer all right the cycle is about power and control it's kind of like the bully because they want to have power so that no one has power over you. They want to bully you, make you feel bad because they feel bad about themselves. And if they make you feel small, it makes them feel better about themselves. So they use intimidation um, by looks, by gestures, by smashing things, by banging things. They often abuse pets. Um, and it's really dangerous if they have a weapon. Okay. And again, the destroying properties, destroying, um, what did it say over there? Damages in property, whether it's your brush or your comb that they break in half, or they put a big hole in the closet door. You know, it doesn't matter. It's still damaging something to some extent. So that's intimidation. Their actions are trying to intimidate you so that you are under their power and their control. Um, they use threats. Um, threaten to leave you. Threaten to commit suicide. That's a big one. Threaten to take your kids away or report you to welfare. Um, and if you don't drop charges, that's what they'll do. They also can make you do illegal things. 
in, in order to control you and have power over you because if they make you do illegal things, you can get in trouble for that. So that's the coercion. Um, but threatening to commit to suicide if you left them because, oh, they're so wounded, um, really needs to be called out and have someone evaluate them. Sometimes the threats are just threats. Sometimes it could be more. Um, so that's to be taken serious. And I want to say, you know, do, um, you know, be gentle with that if they come, uh, threaten to. Try to get them help. But ultimately, you're responsible for your own safety. So remember that. Okay, I'm not saying ignore this, but remember you are responsible for your own safety, how you are treated psychologically, mentally, emotionally, sexually, um, and spiritually. Okay, some if it's a male, sometimes they use male privilege, being the one uh, to define the roles in the home or roles in the relationship act like the master of their castle you need to fall in line have uh, have they have control over you and power over you and they treat you like a servant and they it says make make big decisions it's a male um, I'm sure a female could do all this too but it's all to take your power away okay they use children they make you feel guilty about the children. Um, they harass that, again, they'll take you to court and you won't be able to see your children. Or they'll, if the children are older, they'll, they may um, brainwash the children against the parent. And again, threaten to take the kids away. Threaten to report you to welfare using children having threats um let's see here i'm trying to go into the the worst ones first not not they're all equal but um they isolate they isolate who you talk to who you who you see who you text um what you watch on tv what you listen to they limit your outside involvement and they use jealousy to justify their actions like oh I love you so much that you know he was looking at you the wrong way okay no this is just to control you all right um, jealousy can happen um, but in a male female relationship it's to maintain a tight hold and control and to make you feel guilty you know I, I, I had a boyfriend in college that when he would drink he would get very let's say jealous and I mean I could just look in the direction of another male and he would say what do you you want to date him you know what do you like him now um, and it was only when he was drunk so he was a really bad drunk um, you know we were real young we were like what how old are you uh, 19 20 whatever in college so I did not like if he got too drunk. Otherwise, he was okay. But that's what they isolate you with. And oh, so the point is, when we'd go to future, and these were always at like frat parties and stuff, college parties. So it got to a point where whenever I knew he was really drunk with his friends, I looked down at the floor because I didn't want to listen to his verbal abuse. You know, um, acting as if I wanted to date somebody else when I totally didn't. And I just was looking over at the bag of chips, you know, that was next to a man that was standing there. Whatever. So, um, but they use jealousy to justify their actions. Now, jealousy itself, if you're jealous of what someone has, if you were jealous of um, the promotion they got at work, that's a, that's a different type of jealousy. Um which is I don't think is good but you know whatever people do what they do they use economic abuse 
um, preventing you from getting a job. It says her, but it could be a female. Um, ask for your money. Taking your money. Not letting them know about or have access to family income. Okay, that could be like with the controlling. If they want to make all the decisions. If you're married, they don't let you have your money. Um, they might even keep... Um, someone from getting a job because if they get a job they're not isolated they're with other people that can fact check their abuse now here's the emotional abuse it's putting you down making you feel bad about yourself calling you names making you think that you're crazy that all oh, that didn't happen um over here with the minimizing oh it wasn't that bad Playing mind games, uh, humiliating you, making you feel guilty. Like, well, I was mad because you made me mad. No, no one makes you mad but yourself. Um, my ex-husband said that sentence a lot. Uh, well, I was mad because you made me mad. Well, no, you're mad because you're a verbal abuser. <laughs> and um, you can't take me calling you out on that. Well... You know, but that, but that, that's how he grew up. That's how he grew up talking, verbally abusing was their common dinner time chat. <laughs> so again, it all goes back to childhood, but that's no excuse. You don't have to put up with that. Um, minimizing, demi denying and blaming, making light of it. Oh, I was just kidding. Um, not taking your concerns about their behavior seriously um, or saying that what you said happened didn't really happen. I, I didn't really push you into that bush. You tripped. It wasn't me. I was trying to, I was trying to grab you while you were falling. Okay. Um, shifting responsibility again with the, I'm mad because you made me mad. Right. Saying, they caused it um and not taking concerns seriously so minimizing ouch, all the abusive or poor decisions or poor behavior minimizing them um well we we, we didn't need that 50 bucks um i thought you had more or well aren't you getting paid tomorrow when you don't have a dime to your name and they use the 50 to go buy alcohol okay that's minimizing justifying denying okay so that's that circle now let's look at the next one and i thought those were very helpful all right so the next one red flags <sighs> so very jealous okay and that's like i said that's a different jealousy than um being jealous that someone else got a promotion when you think you should have it's jealous because they need to control and they can't have you in the grips of anybody else because you are their victim that they need to hang on to they believe in male superior to female roles they use was violent before you met them again check arrest records because i'm not saying that someone can't um, rehabilitate but that is a big red flag that I wouldn't even want to touch um, let's see has a bad temper gets angry a lot and over little things little things that's your first red flag what was that like that movie mommy dearest you know you put the toilet paper on the wrong way you know and they get very angry Okay, that's a big red flag. Blame others for what they've done. That is huge. Do not, these abusers do not take responsibility. They, they manipulate and they blame others. They always have a reason for why the abuse happened. It's because, da da da. It's because they, da da da. And here, what I just said before, and I, you know, I haven't even read these or looked at these um, deeply but grew up in a violent and abusive home 
abuse cycle repeats itself generations which is a lot of the problem in society today okay so indicators you're dating an abusive partner he puts you down he lies that's that's very big they're, they're not upstanding citizens they don't they don't hold value I mean well they don't hold value in virtues of being a good person they, they don't see how that values you and I can relate to that because um, it seems like the abusers who lie get away with a lot okay so um, they're afraid of losing a relationship so they really have abandonment issues of their own possessive want sex before you get to know each other now I'm not saying that's an abusive person I wouldn't say so but they also could try to trap you by getting you pregnant or getting pregnant all right um, they want to be with you all the time now I, I wouldn't say that's always an abusive thing because if you met your soulmate you know you might want to be with them is overly charming and gives gifts watch out for the over charming because what they're doing is um, what you call it an abuser uh, like training you you know gift giving after bad behavior gift giving after bad behavior charming you after bad behavior and when they insult you they say you're too sensitive you're crazy or you're just kidding they're Mr. Jekyll or Mrs. Jekyll or Hyde they talk about previous partners in a negative manner again not taking responsibility for what they had done in the relationship it was all the other person they were the victim the crude animal sorry the uh, thing uh, stop pressure you to have sex or to do things that you're not comfortable with pressure you, pressure you to use drugs or alcohol I don't really know if um, uh, older adult would be pressured with that but definitely if you're dating and you're younger um, nothing's ever their fault there's always a reason and they can also always rationalize why the bad behavior happened because it wasn't their fault um, use this apology once they feel like they've apologized or oh, I'm sorry um, they feel you should be done with it <laughs> which uh, no <laughs> no they get scary they can intimidate you and this will only get worse over time so if you are scared in the least or you're like oh he was just in a bad mood he didn't have much sleep um pay attention to your intuition big age differences i don't know i guess double standards female and male roles yeah maybe they can cheat but you can't like you're supposed to forgive them but if you do it um doesn't respect your boundaries again talks about former partners in a disrespectful way uh, that can be a clue male or female that they do not respect the opposite gender or they look down on the opposite gender and they feel uh, superior um, moving too soon, get engaged too soon, have a baby too soon. And this, um, this can feel good when a partner is excited to commit, but again, watch for all the red flags. Claims to have been hurt by many women or men. So the bad experiences have led them to treat people badly um, you will not be able to fix this person or their opinions they come from they don't come from experiences they had with a bad female or a bad male and if it's in a male they could blame their past hurts you know on why they're you know touchy or whatever 
but here it says men's attitudes towards women do not come from their experience with women they come from their experience with other men again the cycle of abuse the childhood the parent raising or rearing and it could be opposite too the woman a woman could be raised by an abusive mother who abused the father and then they become abusive it's um it's a cycle so let's see all right now after you've made the commitment okay then they can get more scary get more controlling discourage you from seeing family and friends oh you don't need them you have me i'll take care of everything take your money all right i refuse to give you money for expenses prevent you from making your own decisions make them they make you think that it's a team effort but really it's this their decision because it's their control telling you that you're a bad parent um, that's all with putting you down, threatening to take your kids away so that you, you won't leave them. Uh, blaming you or acting like it didn't really happen, destroying property, intimidating with guns, knives, or weapons, shoving, slapping, choking, or hitting, attempting to stop you from um, pressing charges. That's where they go into that honeymoon phase. Threatening to commit suicide because of something you've done, which can put severe severe guilt on the victim threatening to hurt or kill you or your family okay which puts severe severe pressure on the victim preventing you from using birth control pressuring you to become pregnant before you're ready and demanding all and uh, all you do is never enough oh okay they say that all they do is never enough for you oh no no well, it can be both ways. Here it's demanding and that you feel that you can never do enough. Because you can't. You cannot please these people. These abusers, male or female. You cannot please them. You cannot rationalize with them. It is a deep ingrained behavior from, yes, probably childhood trauma. From addictions to substances from seeing abusive behavior as a child or um, witnessing it or um, enduring it and mental illness. So, and if all those are combined with a person who has a weapon, it, this is a very dangerous situation. This person needs serious help that you alone as the victim as their loved one can't fix alone so um they gave me a couple of um coping skills you know and i really gonna have to um contemplate on this um because yes they're all this is what everybody says um Read, do a puzzle, watch TV, do a computer game, distract yourself from the stress of being abused, uh, ground yourself, give yourself a, a bath, um, go in the woods, do yoga, um, emotional release, yell, run, shout, cry, okay, self-love, get a manicure, buy yourself, buy yourself something nice, take a bubble bath, um, make your special meal um, write down your negative thoughts list every reason why they might not be true and imagine someone you love and these thoughts um, well write down what advice you would give yourself or someone else if they were a victim like you and access your higher self smile at other people volunteer pray do ra random acts of kindness Pat a dog, um, join a cause, okay? Those are all coping skills. I'm not even going to look at the pros because they're self-explanatory. But the cons are you can't distract yourself for too long and it doesn't resolve the issue. You can't get grounded um, all the time. 
sometimes it's better to not be grounded and stay disconnected and maybe even go into a fantasy world for a short period to protect yourself all right emotional release it's hard to do in every situation it feels odd you can't just scream out you know people might think you're crazy um oh can't drop that um so and then self-love yes sometimes it feels really hard to do um especially if you're out of energy uh, um so um distraught so withdrawn but that is a good one to try to pull yourself out up and give yourself some self-love i'm learning about that myself um you know it is true that you can't love someone else till you love yourself first and if you're putting up with an abusive relationship and you're the victim you are not loving yourself enough because if you did you wouldn't put up with that shit okay a thought challenge uh, making a list of negative thoughts the more emotional you feel this can be hard um you might even feel guilty and shame so you know yeah i think it'd be good to write a letter to your abuser you know swearing them up and down or her up and down you know i do believe in writing things down to get them out of your mind and then maybe burning the piece of paper in a safe environment that might be um helpful and then accessing your higher self um the con is don't get stuck trying to save everybody else and you forget about yourself um remind yourself that you have value remind us everyone has value and that purpose can be found in the smallest things as well as the large so that's accessing your higher self when in my opinion because I, I believe in the Kabbalah I'm learning about the Kabbalah when you do reach your higher self it's after all these trials lessons and traumas so I think this should be try to yes access your higher self but learn about self-love learn about um, caring and what it means to care what it means to love uh oh the tail's wagging what do you need I think he has to go potty okay mommy's almost done all right so th those are the coping skills okay do the best you can um I think I'm just okay okay what you should look for in a partner what makes a relationship healthy two people who value equality and respect each other is great and here's um, the characteristics someone who supports your relationship with your family and your friends Someone who maintains their own friends and family relationship. Someone who supports your personal growth. Who is your cheerleader. Who does encourage you to participate in things. To better yourself. To join clubs. To, to have hobbies. To invite friends over. Um, someone who can continues to have their own interests also. They have a job. They have a hobby. They go out and... Because you need to, to be together. You also need to have separate time. It's a balance. Um, someone who you feel comfortable expressing your feelings and emotions to. That's not going to judge you. That's going to talk with you and listen. Listen. Um, and someone who accepts responsibility for their own behaviors. You know, I'm called to thinking about someone who would say... Oh, yes, um, I shouldn't have done that. 
I understand how that made you feel. That's good. But with that, also be careful that this person isn't mirroring you. What I mean is, like, if you say, oh, when you said, when you didn't introduce me as your girlfriend, it made me feel really bad. It made me feel like we were nothing. So they're going to come back and mirror that and say, oh, you know, I'm sorry for that behavior. I, I should have introduced you. I, I, it was a slip of the tongue. Um, I can understand how you would feel that, you know, you're not important to me. Just make sure the person is sincere, okay? Because abusers do that. They twist things. They manipulate. And they get good at mirroring what, and also trying to say what you expect them to say when it's not their true self. So just, just be careful of that. Um, they can apologize when they're wrong. That is a good thing. They consider you guys a, a partnership, not one superior over the other. They share in decision making. If you, it, it could be where you want to go to dinner, but if you're living together, it could be what picture to put on the wall or, or what furniture to buy. You know, they don't just say, oh, look what I bought. Here it is. This is my choice. Someone who expects both partners to control their own money and never uses money as a way of getting what they want. Yeah, now, when, okay, in my fantasy world, I was like, oh, well, if you're married, um, everything should be together. You're one, you know. Ten of cups, la-ti-da, roses and unicorns. As I got divorced and got older, I think, Personally, I think everybody should have their own accounts and a together account. The together account would pay for all the housing bills, rent, mortgage, utilities, water, gas, cable, whatever. Um, that you both put in a certain amount each to cover all those bills. If let's let's just pretend, let's just pretend the bills are a hundred dollars. So you each put in fifty. If you only make 50, too bad, too sad. Okay? Because you got to pay bills. That's just your problem. Uh, make more money, get a second job. That's how I feel about it. Put an equal amount into one account to pay for all the bills. The other account you have on your own. Um, so that you can get yourself a manicure. Get yourself a haircut. Get yourself a shave. Get yourself um, some new clothes. Uh, things that you really don't need to ask your partner for or about. Um, of course, be respectful because if you are going to buy a brand new TV, you could be like, oh, I'm going to use my money. I think we need a new TV. What do you think? You know, I really want to buy this or I want an extra TV for the bedroom to play my games on. You know, that's what that money's for. But again, you're a partner and you have, uh, you share decisions. Um, it's just a matter of treating people with respect. Watch how they treat their mother and sister. Big red flag. Okay, they don't feel threatened about friendships with other people of the same sex. They trust you and expect to be trusted back, okay? And now I'm looking at this, you know, because so many people are fucked up, it's really hard to trust people and sometimes people don't deserve your trust because they don't earn it. Um, but someone who will trust you and you trust them is the ideal. They encourage you in your goals and dreams. They don't put them down, okay? They hope that you encourage them with their dreams. They point out your positives, okay? They're not just always criticizing you. They make you feel safe. That is very important. 
and they can um, resolve conflicts without violence or putting you down. These two probably are the biggest ones. They make you feel safe. There's nothing that they do that intimidates you. That's very important. Um, you know, assholes are assholes, but also see how they treat other people. Okay, in public. That can be a big red flag. If they don't treat them well. So, we talked about red flags. Um, that was what to look for in a partner. Some gle uh, sorry, green flags here. Which would be the opposite of red flags. Does not judge others. Obeys the law, law. Is trustworthy. Doesn't steal. Is able to fit into many situations. Is not judgmental. Is honest. Is respectful to people. Um, knows when someone needs their space and they're okay with that. Respects others' opinions, even if they don't agree with it. They can admit when, they wrong, when they're wrong. They are responsible in all ways. They have a job. They keep themselves clean. And they keep their um, house clean. They cut their lawn. They, I'm just, just r randomly saying these things. Not that the, you know, if you don't cut your lawn, you're an abuser or anything like that. I don't mean that. I just... They're, they show up on time. They go to work on time unless they're sick. They balance their money well. Just responsible in life. Um, obeying the law is a big thing. Respecting authority. If they do not respect authority, their teachers, the principal, the judges, the law, the police, that's a big red flag. Okay? Um, let's see... They can cry in sadness and in joy, and they're not embarrassed or ashamed about it. You know, that's kind of hard. I know for some men, um, that doesn't mean if they don't cry, they're an abuser. I, I'm not saying that at all. But if they can feel safe with you and you feel safe with them, then you both could be able to cry in, in private, especially like, let's say, a parent passed away. Um, likes to see you happy and respects your boundaries regarding your body. Again, no means no. It doesn't matter if you're married to them, dating them for 10 years. So, these are some of the, um, the flyers that they gave me to go over. Well, we talked about it in the counseling session. Um, this whole thing here explains the whole cycle of abuse. For someone to stop this cycle... The victim has to get out of denial that they are with an abuser. The abuser has to accept responsibility for their behavior and needs to seek in-depth counseling to get at the root of the problem of their anger. You know, if a, if a man abuses a woman, maybe they were abused by their mother possibly so now they're taking it out on women and they don't even know it subconsciously or vice versa um a woman was abused by her father so now she can't have very uh, intimate relationships so she will be an abuser she will cheat she will be moody she will put you down um again in my mind it's all because of the root of a trauma in childhood, but that is no excuse. Adding drugs, alcohol, and weapons to it makes it even worse. Adding mental illness to it makes it very worse. Well, actually, those two should be opposite. Drugs, alcohol, um, very worse, and worse mental illness. This world has a lot of dark energy that I don't know at this point how we get out of this. Um, you know, they talk about in high school, they don't really teach you much about money. They don't really teach you much about balancing money. They don't teach you anything about becoming self-employed, being an entrepreneur, um, which I think they should have in high school 
um, they should bring back, like when I was in high school, they had shop, you know, where you either were, did woodworking or you were a mechanic. You know, those are good things. I don't think they have that anymore. But they also need to have character building classes and what a victim is and what a batterer is and how to seek help for both sides and how relationships work. Um, they need to have a class on that maybe from little to from first to twelfth, you know, age appropriate. Because if we don't do something, these cycles aren't going to stop. More victims will get hurt. Society will get hurt as a whole. Um, more mass shootings will happen. Um, more gun violence. More abuse. More addiction. More social services will be are needed at this current time, but will be needed. So something has to change. And being a teacher, coming from teaching special ed, and also being an adult and pro juvenile probation officer, we need to start with the courts ordering uh, abuse classes. Um, Counseling, mental health services, and the schools educating people on what is appropriate and what is not appropriate behavior. How, what are boundaries for yourself, for your self esteem, for your body? They don't teach any of that. At least not when I was in school and not when I taught. Um, I think that is a start, start in the schools, start in the courts and go from there. That's all I can say. I don't know. I hope this has helped you. If you are dealing with domestic violence in any form, please contact the domestic hotline number in the description of this video down below. Please give a like. Please leave a comment. Please leave encouraging words if you were a victim um, and recovered or even if you were an abuser and recovered from an addiction and now see the error of your ways. Whatever can help the community. Any words of encouragement, um, please leave in the comments below. So take care. Be safe. Good luck to all of you.